Did you always think like that? I mean, because that, that's a pretty mature way of looking at it, and I don't know, does that just come with having been rejected or having seen the industry from the time when you were 19 working at New Line? I think it was a little bit, I, I think it was seeing the industry from when, I think it was partly seeing the industry from when I was 19. I think part of it was how I was was raised to. My mom, my mom was very, you know, very much, in, you know, she, a single mother raised me and my sister. But she was very much about us getting education. We, we were biracial. We grew up in a really not um, accepting part of, of America when we were, I mean, well, all of America wasn't very accepting when we were first born. Um, so, you know, we were in, you know, we were raised in the Baha'i faith, which is very much about like unity of the whole world and the equality of men and women and racism, and equality of religion. And so I've definitely, mom has always, and, you know, just that upbringing has always taught me to think about the bigger picture, you know, like I, you know, I feel, and it's, it's not, doesn't make me any smarter or any better or wiser than anybody. It's just that, you know, I grew up thinking about a world community as opposed, as opposed to like just, you know, my town and, you know, my country. It's like, I, you know, of course I love my country, but I realized that our country was part of a big world. And it seems like a lot of people didn't quite start realizing that until the internet came along and they started going, oh, wow, there's <laughs> a, a whole world out there of other people that we're connected to. Um, so I've always tried to, and it's, it's, it's been to my benefit and to my detriment. Like I always try to see like all sides of an issue. I try to, you know, I have friends from every background on, on the planet, you know, some people that are, that are hardcore like atheists and people that are hardcore religious and people that are right wing and left wing and, you know, people that, you know, and because I, because I, the one thing that my mom always taught us growing up is, and again, it's, you know, Born, being born in 69 you know that was when the last school was there was a, the last school was desegregated in 69 so you know people people tend to kind of forget how we haven't had as much time from a lot of the ugliness that we think we'd like to think that we do and so I got to see a lot of that firsthand growing up but my mom was always like don't judge these people by what they're doing now because they're only treating you how they were taught to treat you this isn't defining who they are and so you have to like, you know, pray for them and wish them well and not do that. And so I try, I try to take that approach with everything. And, and sometimes myself, and I fail miserably at it a lot of times too. But I think that that taught me at a young age just to set, not to separate, but just to kind of see a bigger picture kind of point of view. Because I, I knew, you know, I wasn't, things weren't always going to be horrible. Like, you know, when, when I was like facing racism growing up. And then, you know, on top of that, then I came out being gay. And then it was like, well we can't call him this word, but now we can call him this other word now. And then, you know, so it's just, it's, so you see people just kind of replacing, you know, prejudices um, with other prejudices. And it all comes from places of like fear and, you know, and, and ignorance. I don't mean that in, a, in a, an uneducated way, but just, you know, when people don't, aren't exposed to something like I, sure. I did a, t a podcast the other day and the topic was, but you're not like, you're not like the rest of them. And that's what I heard a lot of times growing up where people that were racist were like, oh, but you're not like the rest of those black people or you're not like the rest of those gay people. Um, and they would just say all these horrible like stereotypes about them. So it's it's interesting when you see the world kind of from that perspective is, is a little bit of an outsider who is trying to understand like all sides of something because you realize a solution lies in the middle somewhere um, and not screaming at this side or this side and that there really aren't two sides. It's just, you know, it makes us feel better if we're like fighting against somebody as, as opposed to trying to like look for a solution. Um, so that kind of thinking has just been, that was inbred in me or not inbred in me, but you know what I'm saying? Like that sure. was kind of instilled. instilled yeah, thank absolutely. you. That's what I was looking yeah. for. I'm a writer. Um, but, but it's that emotional. A, I'm sure to bring that up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but that was instilled at me from yeah. a, a, a young age. Mom always taught me that the world is bigger than me and bigger than what was, ex what was in my immediate uh, vicinity. So like, you know, even if I was going through a rough time and, you know, growing up in like, you know, pre middle school and things like that, she's like, you know, there's a world beyond that that you're gonna get to at some point. And, you know, and I've just, you know, so that's always taught me just not to internalize stuff as much. But the, the bad side is that I'm, is that now I'm, I, I, my life, I am very much a people pleaser where I wanna make everybody happy and I want, and I want everybody to get along because it really is such a simple, it's so, it just is as simple sometimes as sitting down and listening, listening to somebody instead of talking. And I talk a lot because I'm a writer, so I'm, you know I always joke like we don't interact that much with people because we're always in front of in front of our laptops, so it's hard to shut us up when you get us out there. But <laughs> but when you actually, you know, that's why I'm able to have friends with so many different beliefs because I actually sit down 
and we don't agree on everything, but it's so funny when you talk to people, there's, there's automatic defenses that they go to when you talk about certain topics and things. And so I, I know what those are because I see them, people just fall into those defenses all the time. So then I always try to figure out how to talk around those and how to, you know what I'm saying? Not to, it's like when you have a sibling, I love my sister to death, but she knows how to push my buttons. So it's like when she pushes a button, I can either react in a different way or I can react the way that I've reacted for my whole life and say the same thing back to her that I always say that I know is going to start a big fight. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I view life as too, is like, you know, if you're, when you're going through life, it's like dealing with people, dealing with situations. It's like, you can, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the emotion of that moment and react. And um, I feel like I'm like going off tangent here now, but. Um, Do you put a lot of that in your scripts? I mean, especially being in, in a town where there is such a, 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 a maybe a look of like, this is the right way, this is not the right way and feeling like that outsider, because I think that shapes a lot of artists in a very intense way. You think you yeah. put a lot of that in your scripts? Um, I, don't, I, I don't put a lot, I think, uh, I, think I, tr I try to be much, I think I try to just write stuff and then have the inclusivity like speak for itself, even though a lot of that gets taken out of my scripts. Like I, I'll write scripts that have like people from different you know, racial backgrounds or you know, most of my scripts except for Final Station you know, are, are very you know, strong women um, at the center of it. Um, like I haven't written, none of my scripts have had nudity in them, um, just because I don't think I need it. Now sequels have, you know, like, but for me it's like, I don't think, I don't think I need it unless it's, you know, I did, there was a butt shot in my last movie, but it was, it was tastefully done. Oh good. Um, <laughs> and it was from afar and it was just somebody walking out of the bathroom. Oh okay. But, but you know, the, so I try to like, it, it's more like, I, I don't, cause I never want to, cause I write horror movies. I mean, I, mean, I kill people on screen so it's like I, I you know I can't really you don't want to get too preachy with messages you know like in Final Destination I mean you could say yes it's you know you never know how long you have to live so enjoy life while you can but but on top of that I know that I can write like you know a really you know hopefully complex like female character or I can write a gay character who's not a stereotype or I can you know have a Muslim character in there and a lot of times again these characters get taken out after I've sold a script so I've had to learn to kind of let that go and I'm you know moving more into directing and producing now so that I can kind of put that stuff back in there because it, for me it, it's just about showing people as people and I think that's how you break down walls and it's it's sometimes it's easier I'll, it, it's kind of a joke that does tie into the topic but it's like you know I've been sober for like 11 years now and and I notice that every time so all my friends every time somebody gets sober like all their scripts always then have somebody who's either an alcoholic or just got sober in their scripts like it and I you know it's just because all of a sudden you feel like when you you don't realize how prevalent alcoholism is even though you're not supposed to ever diagnose anybody else as being alcoholic it has to be self-diagnosed but you just never realize how prevalent alcohol is you know until you get sober and then it's like you go to a party that's sponsored by Sky Vodka and then you're like can I just get a coke and they're like seven dollars I'm like but you're giving away vodka cranberries for free yeah but that's our sponsor I'm sober. I don't care. Seven dollars. <laughs> so you don't realize how much alcohol is like pushed on you until you don't drink anymore. So when something like that catastrophic happens in your life, when like when you quit something, you know, like that, then I think a lot of times you'll find writers like we'll put that in our in our stuff or we'll bring it up and you know. Um, but I think the outsider thing in general is what is a kind of a common theme you'll find amongst horror writers in general. Is I think that you know a lot of them were like weren't the super popular kids, you know, and there's some really, I mean, and there, and there are some writers that, horror writers I know that were really popular, you know, and were prom king and queen, so, but a lot of them weren't, you know, a lot of them were like the kind of comic geeks and the people that like to, you know, just go off and do geeky things and not, right. not, the, not play the sports and try to be popular kind of people, so um, it's a pretty eclectic mix, but, but yeah, I think you just, everybody does their, does their thing. I have some female horror writers who, um, some of the stuff that I read of theirs, I'm like, wow, this is actually has more nudity and leering at women than if a straight guy wrote this. Like, I mean, <laughs> wait a minute, you said this is a feminist horror movie, right? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I guess maybe you're, you know, like I can't speak for, but I know writers that will try to make sure that they put a message, you know, like in their movies or something that's really important to them. And,